पद्मश्री टी एन मनोहरन पद्मश्री टी एन मनोहरन फॉर्मर प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ द इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट्स ऑफ इंडिया इज अ मोटिवेशन फॉर अस ऑल He was elected to the Central Council of ICAI in 2001 and graced the institute with his contributions for years after that. This notable man was one of four members appointed by the Government of India to the board of Satyam Computer Services for restructuring the company post its scandal. Shri Manoharan has been a member of visiting faculty for taxation at the Southern India Regional Council and is very popular amongst CA students. It's no surprise that he was awarded with the CNN IBN Indian of the Year award in the business category along with his fellow board members of Mahindra Satyam. It is indeed an honor for us to welcome him today. Pleasant good evening to everybody. I deem it a privilege to be here with all of you this fine evening and share some of my views on this Satyam episode. as a case study and it will be a matter of pleasure that you know the thought process is able to be assimilated not only by the industry leaders but also by the young generation who are present here programs of this nature i'm sure may not build a future for these youngsters but i'm sure it will build them for the future and in that sense i am delighted to be here sharing my views and thought process as far as satyam is concerned it was one of the instances of financial statement frauds it was more of fudging of accounts manipulation and as was rightly mentioned as part of introduction you know it all started in terms of mega frauds early in 2000 with enron and if you take stock of things that happened in the western world you can list out as to how it has been happening but in terms of india you know satyam captured the attention because it was first of its kind that surfaced and uh, the magnitude was something uh, you know incomprehensible as far as the indian economy was concerned and that too happening in the it sector which put india on the international map very prominently in terms of the basic facts as some of you may be aware satyam was uh, you know incorporated in the early 80s but its growth trajectory was on fast track in the last one decade when uh, it accelerated itself to position as the fourth largest indian corporate in the information technology industry with uh, 66, 66 country operations 53000 employees more than 600 global customers out of whom 185 were of the fortune 500 category and it also was listed in new york stock exchange in addition to be uh, being listed company in india as well as in few other jurisdictions and with a top line of 2 billion us dollar revenue so this profile you know emerged in 2008 when the there was a global financial crisis which was preceded by subprime crisis and uh, the inflow of orders started drying down in the information technology sector even campus interviews in 2008 and 9 was not all that successful you know recruitments almost stopped or slowed down and uh, 7th january the confession came from the promoter who said that the accounts have been fudged and what has been published is not really true and whenever any such fraud has been detected or confessed the stock market reacts very violently and you can see that you know what was quoted in the very same uh, the preceding year at 600 rupees 500 rupees with the face value of 2 rupees 
plummeted to 6 rupees per share immediately after the confusion. And the transactions in terms of uh, you know, buying and selling, which was happening on an average basis, suddenly shot up because of panic selling, because of this news. And Satyam is not a case of detection of fraud by investigation. It was more a case of investigation succeeding the confusion. What was the sum and substance of the confusion? The revenue was inflated by raising fictitious billings. And uh, once you raise the bills, you know, fictitiously, you have to show it as having been collected because it's from different geographical jurisdictions. And therefore, the bank statements were fudged. And what is collected ought to be shown as deployed, either by expending it or investing it. And to spend such a huge amount is very difficult, so therefore, it was shown as invested in fixed deposits in banks. And to evidence that fixed deposits were falsely created. And once you account for fixed deposits, you should also account for the interest that accrues on the fixed deposits, so on and so forth. And what was not collected out of these fictitious billings was shown as sundry debtors in the balance sheet uncollected. And uh, this is what the confession narrated as what was happening in the past. And uh, indications are that it ought to have been happening for past uh, 24 quarters, that is six years almost. With the result that the book profit was inflated as against the real profit. And the gap between the book profit and the real profit was accelerating in terms of fictitious reserves on one side and bank deposits non-existent on the other side. In a balance sheet, as we know, on the right hand side you have assets, left hand side liabilities. When this confession came, suddenly one realized that on the left hand side, on the right hand side nothing was left and on the left hand side nothing was right in terms of bank deposits and reserves. And uh, that led to a scenario where confession had to be made because the liquidity was drying down, outstandings were piling up and the last effort to merge matters, the Sun's companies with large land bank also did not succeed because the, though the board approved it, the shareholders voted it down. So with the result, you know, it was felt that it, no longer this game could continue and that led to confession. And uh, it is more aptly described in the confession letter that it was like riding a tiger, not knowing how to get off without being eaten. It is in that background, you know, the consequences of confession need to be captured. The worst affected were employees, undoubtedly. But just to begin with, the investors across the globe felt cheated. There were class action suits filed in the U.S. courts, which are pending even today and uh, customers lost confidence and they were concerned about the continuity of the projects, confidentiality, cost to overrun if they had to migrate to competitors or other service providers and employees as I said were they really shaken up. They were shaken up on all fronts in the sense that uh, you know when the confession occurred in the morning I was say about 10 o'clock in India it was early morning, 5 o'clock or so in Europe, when the Satyamites who were working there, uh, you know, were uh, woken up by the hotel reception to say that their credit cards got deactivated by the concerned banks and therefore they had to deposit either euros or check out of the hotel when it was minus 10 degrees or whatever it is. And back in India, in the headquarters, you know, location, Hyderabad, where Satyam was a celebrated entity organization with all the employees, uh, you know, being looked upon with kind of a good rec recognition in all the joints where they walk in. Suddenly they were treated differently. Even the children of the employees were not allowed to be played with the neighbor's children. They were not all that welcome even in restaurants or social functions. So 
and uh, you know they were not sure whether many of the social commitments in the families will go on like the marriage alliances or whatever it is and the post dated housing loan or automobile loan checks that were issued will it get uh, cleared or bounced back because the job security was not sure they were not sure whether 31st january 2009 they'll be getting their monthly pay and uh, the irony of the situation was that some of these executives who had saved you know some um, 6 crores or whatever 5 crores in the past they all invested it in esops of satyam and which is which was not worth the paper on which you know it was uh, invested so that was the peculiar scenario in which they were positioned though they you know uh, of course uh, the cardinal principle of investment is that you should not put all your eggs in one basket but that was breached by them apparently and bankers though satyam did not borrow heavily the outstanding loans of few hundreds of crores the bankers were really concerned they wanted to uh, recover every rupee that was possible and uh, the government wanted to rescue the company the government predominantly wanted to rescue the company pr because you know it was worried about the investors confidence in india and also the customers who transact with india you know what kind of image this would be sending in so there were clearly options before the government to follow the us model or european model where bailout plans have been implemented or you know allow the market to decide the destiny of satyam but fortunately the government of india thought out of the box dissolved the then existed board and nominated six of us mr deepak parekh a banker mr kiran karnik former chairman of nascom a renowned name in it sector and mr tarun das representing industry and uh, mr achudan a legal expert who was sebi member earlier and also chairman of company law tribunal and uh, i was picked up from the finance field as past president of icai and this five member team as it was formed lic had huge stakes in satyam so they requested one of their employees to be also part of the team so mr mainak was taken in that's how this team was nominated we were given absolute freedom to take decisions and uh, design the plan of action as we walked in you know like when i landed in hyderabad to assume this office i was uh, taken i was received by the travel agency uh, chauffeur car driver who greeted me and as we were traveling in the car after uh, gaining some intimacy with me he said sir my boss wanted to tell you four months bills are pending so it needs to be cleared that gave me an idea as to how precarious is the financial situation in satyam and when i took stock of the immediate needs while about 2000 crores of arrears were pending on various fronts the priority was this salary that needs to be dispersed by 31st of january which was 500 crores monthly salary bill of satyam and therefore a strategy had to be worked out to revive satyam in terms of its cash flow liquidity and uh, restore the normalcy as far as this financial stability is concerned then customers were also wanting to migrate but one good thing in IT sector is unlike the manufacturing sector where customers could cancel orders overnight and face legal consequences or battle it out, in IT industry it is not easy to terminate the contracts overnight. It requires few months to smoothly migrate from the existing service provider for many reasons. So that was the advantage in which we were positioned and uh, that fortunately came handy for us so as to continue with the uh, mission of revival so there and employees also you know employees many of them wanted to quit so we had to persuade them motivate them and in a scenario like this the talented ones will get the job anywhere so that was another challenge that we had to face 
and we appointed legal advisors to handle simultaneously legal issues in US as well as in India and we went on handling other issues as well. We prepared a SWOT analysis as to what are the strengths of Satyam, what are the challenges, threats, so on and so forth. And we found that you know, Satyam had an excellent world-class infrastructure, premium uh, clients, and excellent pool of talent. And uh, the outstanding bills were also there. So we, we, we thought if we can persuade the client, customers to pay up, maybe a little in, earlier than what they would normally do, you know, it would uh, serve the uh, company very well and help the operations to be carried on. We also worked on to arrange some kind of a bridge loan with uh, two of the uh, banks in India as a stopgap arrangement. So uh, on the financial front, this is how we started working, making use of the strengths and opportunities. But we had a lot of bottlenecks, stumbling bottlenecks in terms of the challenges that had to be handled. Uh, I won't call them threats, they were real challenges in terms of investigation agencies summoning the employees, interrogating them, and after that, the exhausted uh, batch of employees to come and execute what we wanted them to do to revive the company was a real challenge. Similarly, media wanted to uh, get to know everything, but in an operation like this, uh, confidentiality was essential to make the revival process a successful one. And uh, if you start uh, you know, publicizing every move, then it may not happen. It may get aborted or there could be you know, many other forces that may not allow it to happen. So therefore, we had to handle the media also. That was a very sensitive thing. Uh, you know, while media helped us to revive in a way, I should acknowledge. But at the same time, one section of the media, as all of you would agree, are more keen on sensationalizing or publicizing sensational news, negative news, that uh, immediately creates panic in the minds of customers, employees across the globe. So that was a real challenge. You know, if electricity is invented today, I'm sure many of the media would flash it, saying that, you know, humanity has a bright future and it's a great invention, creative invention and all that. But at the same time, one section of the media, I'm sure, would have it as the headlines by next day saying, candle industry is under threat. You know, that's how the, every aspect can be looked at negatively also is portrayed and we know that. And uh, there were challenges in seeking new work for Satyam because of the tainted image and uh, because the bank guarantee had to be given and no bank was willing to give Satyam a bank guarantee unless, you know, 100 plus margin was deposited. So these were all some of the challenges that we had to face and handle it. And uh, the management of Satyam was peculiarly positioned. It was operating in silos. And uh, one vertical did not know what was happening in the other vertical. Apparently, this was done to defraud at the top so that no vertical knows what is the holistic picture or overall figures so that everybody would be in a position to find out this fudging and all that. In fact, in case of these frauds, many times technology is also used. So therefore, uh, even in Satyam, technology was extensively used for fudging the accounts. There was S-code and H-code. S-code was known only to the top few, you know, who got arrested after this fraud. Uh, all others had H-code. So if you have used the S-code, all the data will be seen, including the fictitious one, whereas H-code will enable you to access only to the genuine data. So S means show and H is hide. That's how they coined it. How did we go about in that 100 days of operation? actually 97 days of operation. We used to meet on a weekly basis, decide on the strategy, and uh, it was possible for me to live in Hyderabad, position holistically, I mean 24 by 7 only for Satyam, because as ICI president, I did that, and therefore it was easy to replicate it for Satyam revival. And my colleagues used to get the updated report every night from me on all the aspects. And uh, by next board meeting again, the following week, you know, we'll take stock of things, review, make moves. And uh, every evening leadership calls we used to pick up to motivate employees. 
and uh, talk to customers at any point of the time. Uh, I was available to receive the calls, to meet the visitors, uh, and attend to many of these issues. And uh, even some of the employees were good enough to come and say, we will take only the fixed salary, we'll forego the variable salary, but we said nothing doing, we'll not reduce or default on any front. So we started, uh, you know, we could get 135 million US dollar equivalent of loans from two banks. And we also could persuade customers to start paying up early. So with that, we could manage the day-to-day -day operations and the salary was not delayed or defaulted at all. And even statutory dues, we started clearing in, uh, in phases. And uh, we even shot video clippings and uh, circulated it across the location so that employees will get the motivational messages from the board nominated by the government. We pr used to prepare e-newsletter every day and that would eat the mailbox of every employee of 53,000 employees on a daily basis to give them the positive update. Customers used to get weekly bulletins and um, you know uh, we were available on call at any time. Uh, that's how we could uh, create the connectivity, confidence and uh, motivate people to work together. In fact, we said many of them were because of Satyam, they came up in life. So we said, you are what you are because of Satyam and this is not the situation for you to leave the company and uh, you should stay back and you know, fight back to restore Satyam to normalcy along with us as a team so that few months down the line we can look back with a sense of satisfaction that you did what you had to do, what you owed to the company as well as to the nation in terms of restoring normalcy in its functioning. There was a most critical decision that we had to take, whether to continue Satyam like this, clean up everything, identify the real assets and liabilities and then offer it for takeover by other groups, strategic investor. Alternatively, as is various condition, immediately offer it for takeover so that a new investor will bring in capital as well as take control of the affairs. Because without a owner in control, how long one can continue? We felt Satyam is like a patient in ICU with multiple fractures. And unless, uh, and if you spend time unnecessarily on diagnosis and uh, conducting various tests, the patient may not be alive by the time a decision is taken to operate. So we thought it's best to operate immediately, secure the survival of the patient and then simultaneously carry on other operations. That's how we chose the second option and uh, appointed investment bankers, uh, requested former Chief Justice uh, Baruchaji to be the chief observer so that transparency, you know, fairness, equity, all that is ensured in the bidding process. We moved petitions before SEBI and CLB to relax some of the provisions so that smoothly all this could be handled. And initially when we released an ad inviting you know, people to uh, indicate their interest in acquiring Satyam. Good response was there, but that, and we were delighted, but that was short-lived because out of 141, we found many were fictitious. And the real, you know, parties who wanted to participate were about only 10. And out of 10, according to our criteria, three did not qualify. So we sent out documents only to seven, out of whom only five submitted. And even out of that five, two did not get shareholders approval, so they had to pull out in the last minute. That left to only three bidders in the race. That is Wilbur Ross, LNT, and Tech Mahindra, Mahindra Group. And uh, we also fixed, you know, a date, a deadline for them to submit the technical bid and financial bid. But they wanted some data so that they can make up their mind as to how much to quote, what should be the acquisition price for Satyam. So we had to give them some information for which purpose we created a virtual data room, physical data room, provided all the information. We arranged for campus ins inspection. We also made a management presentation. We entertained calls from their experts, advisors to clarify on queries relating to legal aspects because there were also legal claims, legal uh, issues pending and uh, because uh, and uh, it was difficult to quantify the actual potential liability on account of Satyam while the assets could at least the real estate assets could at least be valued and gauged. 
every day as we were in the revival operation, you know, uh, we used to list out as to how many issues are there. Today, there are only 10 issues. So out of that, I used to tick before going to bed early morning, uh, maybe 2 a.m., 3 a.m., four issues we used to tick, and I used to go to bed. Next day morning, within one hour of the functioning, that six would become 12. And the issues will come from unknown sources, unknown quarters, and of different magnitude. So all that had to be uh, you know, comprehended in quoting the price, which was very difficult and uncertain situation. But nevertheless, these three players you know, part, uh, had to participate in the bid. In fact, 13th April, when it was the D-Day for submission of technical bid, financial bid in Mumbai, Taj President Hotel, uh, one week before that, I was addressing, as usual, one vertical, that is the Oracle team. A uh, few hundreds were present in the auditorium and uh, many uh, hundreds uh, across the globe. And uh, as usual, uh, you know, I addressed uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening and started my lecture. Fifteen minutes of updating, then interaction. All the questions were clarified smoothly and just to keep them motivating to continue their delivery to the customers on the site. And when everything was about to smoothly end, there was one question from an executive who said, we are happy about what the government nominated board is doing, but if on 13th of April, there are no takers for Satyam, what will you do? That was the last question I wanted to take or expected at that point of time because the situation was so uncertain, none of us knew what is going to happen on 13th April till it happened. But we were working with a sense of hope, positivity, and a mindset that all this should end well. But it was not capable of being prediction, predicted. And uh, I took the question and uh, uh, smiled and told that executive, you need not worry, we have plan B. Then everybody cheered and said, if you have plan B, we have nothing to worry. And after everybody left, I was wondering what was that plan B. It is not difficult to devise plan B, C, D and all that. But the anxiety was, plan A should not fail. It should somehow happen. That was the dream. That was the goal because, you know, again to start from the beginning would have been a Herculeus task and in IT sector it can collapse like a pack of cords after that initial gestation period when the customers migrate, the employees flee and you have nothing to protect or preserve except the, you know, brick and mortar part of that sector. So therefore, that, is, that was the concern. Fortunately, Wilbur Ross quoted 20. LNT quoted 45.90 and Mahindra Group quoted 58 rupees and we declared Mahindra's as the highest bidder. We had a clause in the bidding where if two, I mean, uh, if there are more than one bidder within the top 90 percent, that is the gap between the bidders is less than 10 percent, we will rebid again among them so that the maximization of price was possible. But uh, the gap between 58 and 45.90 did not meet that requirement, so we had to go ahead and declare Mahindra's as the successful bidder. And that's how it translated itself into a reality. Having said that, having shared that, I just did an analysis of all these frauds right from Enron. You know, what are the factors that contribute? Starting from greed to, you know, so many lapses in the governance norms. It is possible that one or two factors might have contributed. Many factors could have contributed. Cumulatively, it could have happened. Independently, something could have, uh, you know, uh, been the factor in many of these frauds. And government also, regulators also want, were keen to know what can be done to prevent these frauds. While I have offered my suggestions from my side, I have only cautioned and said, you know, these frauds, should not be viewed as a generality. It is an aberration, it is an exception. So we have to cautiously pick up the lessons and act only on those which need to be acted upon. 
It is not that one promoter has done this and all promoters are like this. It is not one CFO is fraudulent, all CFOs can be branded like that. Similarly, it is not that if there is an audit failure in one instance, it doesn't mean that the profession is like that. So one cannot afford to generalize the exception and have a knee-jerk reaction and then drastically change things. Because if by changing the law you can prevent frauds, then after 2002, there should not have been any frauds in U.S. Because U.S. brought in a stringent law, Serbens Oxley Act in 2002, and after that also frauds continued to happen, which brings out the message that for good people you need not have a, you need not tell them what to do, what not to do, but for bad people, whatever amount of laws you bring, they know how to circumvent it. So the best way to deal with them is to investigate and give strictest punishment so that they not only the wrongdoers are punished but others are also sent a signal that this is where what will happen to you in case you indulge in such a thing so therefore with that kind of a uh, message you know suggestions had been given and regulators are in the process of uh, deliberating and uh, bringing out changes and these are some of the items I listed out, which are being debated in India, consequent to the Satyam episode. Uh, you know, what can happen ultimately, what is the best solution, all those things, uh, nothing may change on certain aspects, but some fine tuning may be required on certain other aspects. All this is bound to happen, but I thought I just will capture some of these things. And while the top eight are on specifics like rotation of audit partner, peer review, you know, internal audit, statutory audit role, audit committee, independent directors, competence and uh, capabilities, so on and so forth. I think uh, a day has come, I mean, uh, corporate India has to also move from the focusing on tangibles to intangibles. No doubt tangibles are indicators of your success or performance or results. But intangibles, if they are preserved and protected, I think tangibles would automatically follow. Uh, the top line, the earnings per share, the net worth, the fixed asset base, all these things are fine. But the intangibles in terms of values, goodwill, customer satisfaction, human resource development and training, if these are focused, quality control, if these intangibles are addressed and kept at the high, I think tangibles would automatically follow. And the last but one, which I just want to emphasize because the younger generation also is here. You know, in the case of Satyam Promoter, he reached the top by sheer vision, hard work, competence, capabilities. You may reach the top by all these factors. But to stay there, you need integrity, you need character. So the important ingredient in the growth uh, profile that was missing was the character component and therefore the mighty fall. And that is the same case with everybody else. It was Mahatma Gandhi who said, and there is enough for everybody's need, but not for everybody's greed. And it is not only the end that should be noble, even the means by which you achieve that end, you want to achieve that end should also be good. So that factor needs to be always borne in mind so that the growth may be slow and steady. If it is fast, it's fine. But even if it is slow and steady, it will be permanent. It will not be temporary if it is backed by values. And the last point is that when we embarked upon this challenge of reviving Satyam, uh, there was no positive uh, you know, assurance. Everybody around us said it's a gone case. You just cannot revive Satyam. Why are you unnecessarily <clears throat> spoiling your name also by getting into this? But when it was a call of the government as a citizen, you know, it was the duty of every one of us to offer what best we could do and it is in that perspective we took it up as a mission. And, uh, you know, even this small, small, uh, the atmosphere and the mood was totally, you know, uh, very pessimistic and gloomy. And even employees, you know, the small, small agreements of bank loan renegotiation and just extending it for installments and all that. 
I purposely made it as a celebrating events. Every week we used to sign one agreement, call all connected divisions, applaud them, congratulate them, host lunch to them, just to create an atmosphere of positivity and send signals across, vibrating that you know something is happening in the uh, on the revival. So that, and in fact, every call of the customer before I concluded the call follow-up calls, I used to ask them, how is the delivery? And they told me, before the scam, it was good, now it is the best. So which also indicated that the employees took it upon themselves, that this is a do or die situation, and they had to give their best. And the customers, therefore, did not migrate. I mean, 10, 15 percent we lost initially as a knee-jerk reaction, but after that, others continued to patronize at that critical juncture. So we, and in fact, some of the foreign customers initially who were reluctant to listen to us started listening to us. So we asked them, I asked them after the turnaround, what made you to uh, listen to us, cooperate with us and support us? They said, some of them said, we came to know that here are six strangers from different fields who have taken this up at the call of the government. And in the very first board meeting, all of you have passed a unanimous resolution, but whatever be the time that takes to revive Satyam, we will not take any remuneration or even sitting fee, one rupee as well, for the entire operation. That made us think that if these gentlemen are so serious and not for any return or monetary consideration, then they must be meaning business and we should wait and watch. We should not migrate. We should not desert Satyam. This is exactly what one of the foreign customers said. In fact, he, he was so generous and magnanimous, he went on to say, this just cannot happen in our country. Maybe this can happen only in India. This is how he acknowledged that kind of a sentiment. And a few weeks later, Wall Street Journal in US wrote, maybe America should learn from India as to how to handle such a crisis situation. So this is how, ladies and gentlemen, the story of revival took. But at the same time, we have to learn a lot also from other economies. Like in Madoff's case, within six months the trial was concluded and 150 years of imprisonment was sentenced. Maybe we should learn to be effective in enforcement and quick delivery of justice. You know, that is where we are lacking. So it is an opportunity to learn where we are good at and where we are not. And maybe if we know our limitations and uh, you know, take efforts to overcome them, I'm sure it will be a glorious journey for India because I'm sure with all this budding uh, youngsters bubbling with enthusiasm in their quest for knowledge who have assembled here, India is going to transform itself into a developed economy, super economy. And I'm sure, I have no doubts in my mind, that 18th and 19th century belong to Europe, 20th century belong to US, 21st century must belong to India, and we must all make it happen. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for such a wonderful insight. Surely, leaders with visionary and integrity like you, present in the Indian corporate world, we are sure the corporate world is in safe hands. And in spite of such deterrence, uh, investor confidence remains intact. So I have a question for you uh, from the audience. And uh, being a team member, what is more difficult, raising funds or keeping employees with the company? It's a question by Mr. Anurag Shukla, SVITS. Yeah. <clears throat> I felt uh, retaining employees was more challenging. Nothing is difficult in this world. Maybe the degree of challenge varies. If you wholeheartedly embark upon something, everything is possible. There is nothing impossible. But retention of employees was more challenging because of the demoralization effect. They were unwilling, uh, they were unable to believe that this company can come back. So to motivate them, to enable them to give their best was a real challenge. Funds, maybe if we did not get it from customers, the banks would have given, if banks did not give, we could have found alternative resources. So that was not a difficult challenge. So I personally believe employee friend, human resource friend, and especially in a service sector, the largest pool of assets are the human resources who walk out 
every day without any guarantee that they will walk in the next day. So that was the challenge. Okay. Any further questions? If we have any. Right. Right. So uh, may I call upon uh, CA Manoj Farnis, uh, Central Council Member of ICI, to present a memento to Manuran sir. Thank you, sir.